and welcome to the special edition of Young Turks. I'm Shireen Bhan and we're coming to you from Monte Carlo from the EY World Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. I've got with me a young entrepreneur from the United States of America. Sarah, appreciate you joining us here on the show. So take us through your entrepreneurial journey. What made you want to do Swell? I had an idea for Swell. I was a customer and I thought maybe the market was ready for a fashionable, functional water bottle, something that worked better and something that looked better. I don't like plastic bottles. They oftentimes don't get recycled. They get thrown away. They wind up in landfills. And I thought if I could create a better water bottle, maybe I could convince more people to carry a metal bottle and use less plastic. in 2010 in the United States of America, the Swell bottle, which keeps drinks cold for 24 hours and hot for 12, is now sold in 35 countries. This company's mission is to rid the planet of plastic bottles and the venture donates part of the proceeds from the sale of each bottle to charity. Harvard Business School graduate and former tax auditor, Sarah has tied up with fashion retail chains like J. Crew, Nordstrom and Neiman Marcus to position Swell as a versatile accessory for the environmentally conscious style buffs. I really needed to find an industrial designer and some engineers to help me make some drawings. From there, those drawings turned into an actual product um, through a lot of back and forth work, working with a number of different factories, trying to get the technology right, but also to make sure that it looked like a beautiful product that people would covet and want to carry. Mm. So beyond the differentiation, which is clearly the material differentiation, uh, what else do you use to market this product? Because you talk about how it can keep your water cold for 24 hours and hot for 12 hours, but what is the key difference? differentiator as far as your product is concerned? Well, I think exactly that, the functionality, but I think the differentiator is the, the fact that it comes in a hundred different colors and sizes. We have a color called Monaco Blue, which actually matches this beautiful scenery inspired behind, by, inspired yeah. by. Um, and we sell our products in much different places. So we're sold in the most fashionable boutiques all over the world in 35 countries, places that you would never consider in the past potentially buying a water bottle, mm. but we're really positioned as a fashion accessory that keeps you hydrated. And that's what the way that we've really entered the market differently. So how is it to convince retailers to actually put the product on the shelves? What was it like having a conversation with Nordstrom, for instance, getting your distribution right? We got a lot of no's in the beginning. We got a lot of uh, puzzled glances in the beginning. What is this? What is this? What are you trying to sell? Yeah, I think yeah. it was Bloomingdale's that said, we don't carry water bottles. And now, actually, they do. Mm. Um, it, it really took a lot of convincing different different people. And honestly, if you could get a buyer to try the product one time on a hot day like today, they were convinced. So what's been the big lesson for you over the last few years since you've started Swell? I think the most important lesson that I've learned is that it really does take an entire community yeah. to be an entrepreneur. You can't have all of the answers yourself, especially if you're doing a high growth fast-moving company like myself or many of the entrepreneurs on your program. Um, I've been really lucky to be part of a, a community of women on the EY Entrepreneurial Winning Women program. And I have mentors and um, a community of coaches that have gone before me and have told me about things that I need to do or maybe things that I need to stay away from right. as I grow my business. And mm -hmm. I think that lesson more than anything has really helped propel me in a way to grow faster than I ever thought possible. Mm -hmm. So where do you see the company from here? What kind of targets do you have set for yourself both in terms of geographical expansion as well as revenues and profitability? Well, we've just hired an international business head who starts the day after I get back from Monaco and we have um, a lot of new countries in our sites. Right now we're only in 35 countries so there's a lot of international expansion opportunities. We have waiting lists of countries and stores that really want to sell our products. Is India on that list? India is high on the <laughs> list. You'll be seeing swells many, many times over I think for the rest of this year. Okay, mm -hmm. so as you grow and as you expand, what are the challenges that you foresee and uh, what are you doing in order to be prepared to cope with those challenges? The, just the challenge of dealing with scale. Scale is, is, is probably the biggest challenge right now. Um, inventory planning is a bit difficult in that we're selling so much so fast in every channel that we have. Um, we're, we were a small company, but we're growing fast. But to be an inventory company, you really have to have someone keeping an eye on what colors, what products are selling well, and what parts of the world, and have a supply chain that can keep up with that demand. So as you sort of foresee the future, is a listing on the cards at any point in time? Are you looking at bringing investors on board? I think at some point we'll bring on investors. We're having some early conversations. We're lucky that we haven't had to have investors, but there is a significant amount of interest.
Sarah, here's wishing you all the very best in your mission to rid the planet of plastic bottles and we hope to see swell in India soon. It's time now for us to take a break, but when we return, another woman entrepreneur who's making parenting a less tedious affair. The story of baby Chakra after the break. <laughs>